チャームサイバー !So, eighth week is generally a winding down period in Oxford. Um, you, you have the last set of classes, you have the last set of lectures.、Um, you generally try and make the most of being around your friends and do some social stuff before you head back home. But being a fourth year student,、uh, it's a little bit different for me because my master's project's draft is due in next, the end of next week.、Um, so I need to stick around、uh, for at least another week just to make sure that that's handed in properly. And it's got to the point now where I'm doing actual science in the master's project. So、um, I talk about this in a previous video. About what my project is about, but basically it comes down to trying to fit this model to atmospheric data. And we found that there's,、um, it seems to be a simple relationship between how close together your points are and how far into the future you can make predictions, which is kind of cool. But eighth week being eighth week, most of this week is focused on trying to make the most of your friends and making the most of the opportunities available in Oxford before we all have to go back home. So loads of different things happen in eighth week. For one thing, the termly publications of the Oxymoron and the Peter file are published.、Uh, those are, they're both comedy、uh, rags, basically. They're both comedy magazines that are published.、Um, the Oxymoron on a university wide scale, the Peter file just within St. Peter's. My favourite thing in the、uh, Peter file this term, I think, is philosophy library in existential crisis. Horrific scenes were recounted by those present at the library on Thursday. One student claimed to have spent five hours trying to decide whether to write his essay in Times New Roman or Calibri before concluding that meaning was an arbitrary social construct and proceeding to explain this in Wingdings. All the oxymorons,、uh, both past and present, are actually available on their website, which I will link to in the description. Following on from my success of seeing Brian May at the Union last week, this week I went to see a kind of childhood hero of mine, I guess, a guy called Ray Mears. I watched All of his documentaries when I was a kid, so to actually be able to meet him was amazing. So he was talking about this solo expedition that he did to Canada,、uh, and he spent about a week just canoeing on his own through the lakes and、uh, talking about the practicalities of doing a solo expedition and, and how amazing it is. Then on Friday, really the end end of term,、uh, two things happened. I'm a member in St. Peter's of the middle common room, or the MCR, and the JCR, the junior common room, because I'm a fourth year student, so I'm kind of doing my graduate year, but I'm also I haven't graduated. So I benefit from being able to go to events put on by the MCR and the JCR. And on Friday, the, J- the MCR was putting on a cocktail evening. So they were doing cocktails for free. We had free nibbles. Loads of people around in the MCR. It was just a chance to mingle, catch up with friends that you hadn't seen for a while because we're all doing master's projects at the moment. And、um, try and meet a few new people as well. Then, immediately after that, went to the JCR for the last BOP of the term. Now, because finalists don't really have time to go to BOPs in the last term, well, certainly the end of the last term,、um, this was the finalists' BOP. So, we got to decide on a theme, and by poll, it was decided that the theme should be 80s. So, lots of big hair, lots of leather jackets. Now, during the BOP, I was thinking that、uh, in this series of、uh, introducing specifically Oxford things, in the past we've had the Bodleian, the Ashmolean, I haven't covered One really important part of my Oxford life, and in fact the college's Oxford life. Now, St. Peter's College has been voted as having the best bar in the university, and it has also been voted as having the best college drink. St. Peter's has the Cross Keys. Now, it costs £5, and it's the typical BOP fare. Paul Moore, our lovely bar treasurer, will explain what goes into one and make you one. And into these Cross Keys goes two shots of apple sours, one shot of gold schlager, two shots of vodka, one shot of Bacardi, topped up with lemonade, l e m o n a d e Uh, and frankly, it's a, job, a drink to get the job done. <laughs> <laughs> Two of those, and you're good to go out. Now, Jamie, you asked me a question, and、uh, your audience a question, that I've been thinking an awful lot about over the course of the past year.、Um, and you asked, what is the ultimate goal in life? What makes me happy? And I've come to the conclusion that I basically align myself with utilitarianism. So, this idea that increasing the total amount of happiness that other people feel is what makes me happiest. The two things which I enjoy the most in life are learning new things and teaching, teaching other people new things, which is why I want to become a university lecturer, because I get to combine the two things. Seeing that ignition when they really understand it for the first time, and seeing that in 30 different people's faces, you know that you've made their lives that bit richer, you made them that bit happier by doing that. And to me, that's the,、um, the greatest pursuit of all. I want other people to be happy, and in doing that, that makes me happy. But then this begs the question if I'm making other people happy, surely I'm, I'm doing that only to make me happy, not for the purpose of making them happy. So rather than being utilitarian, does that not make me hedonist? I don't know very much about philosophy and I'd like to learn more. Maybe we should do a video each explaining about things like this. So you could explain a bit of philosophy and I could explain a bit of physics. So that's it. Work for the year's over. I can finally rest and. Just wish I could remember that thing that I'm forgetting.